Alright, so if you remember a little while back, Scotland was voted the most beautiful country in the world, and I made a video, kinda taking the piss. Today, however, I thought I would just go for the jugular and list off 10 of the worst places in Scotland. And by 10, I mean 5, because I'm actually gonna split this video into two parts, for no reason other than to agitate the comment section. So after watching this video counting down from number 10 to number 6, I want you to jump down in the comment section and tell me what you think the top 5 should be. Quick disclaimer before we start, I haven't actually visited every town in Scotland. I've not quite got the manpower to organise such an operation. I mean the council can't even manage it and they have over 200,000 employees. So instead of making my own list of the 10 worst, I'll be taking the typical YouTuber approach and just plagiarising the list from another website to try and ascertain which geographical locations in Old Caledonia or shite holes. Trailer for sale or rent. Rooms to let 50s. A local resident once described Coat Bridge as a shitty little town in Scotland run by Neds. A cider bottle firmly gripped in one hand, a cigarette in the other. Many a time you can walk down the street and be sure something will be burning. A house, a car, or even a kid's bike. Personally, I can't comment on the flammability of Coat Bridge, but I know it used to be a major player in coal mining back in the day. So maybe there's a connection. That still wouldn't explain the kids' bikes though. Maybe the old Coat Bridge Airdrie feud runs a little deeper than we thought, and the bike shop in Airdrie has less stringent health and safety requirements than all kids' bikes sold to them. It's either that or the aforementioned Neds are struggling from crippling arthritis and are struggling to keep a hold of their cigarettes. Either way, what's the fire service up to while all these things are spontaneously combusting? Now maybe lack of fireproofing in a few Neds is not a concern for you when you're picking a new location for your family home. Maybe you care more about the shopping. So what's Coatbridge like? Is it filled with exquisite trinkets and fine cuisine? How do you think Coatbridge is, like the shopping and... Not very good. Right, and what, what was your, your favourite part of Coatbridge? Um, your favourite thing about it? Is it Nothing. Nothing. Not a thing. <laughs> I'll, t I'll take that as a no then. No phone, no promo. Coatbridge was the hometown of a comic book writer named Mark Miller. He wrote a large collection of comic books that have since been turned into films, including Wanted, Kick-Ass and Kick-Ass 2, both the Kingsman films, Fantastic Four, Logan, and Captain America Civil War. Two hours of pushing broom buys a beat between four bed. My hometown. Now there's no doubt in my mind that Falkirk is deserving of a place on this list. I'm almost certain it's the only town that's ever had a mugger trying to mug another mugger. The highlight of the high street is McDonald's, which is conveniently placed right next door to Pound Stretchers and right across the road from the charity shop. Now I'm not trying to say we have a lack of jobs in poverty, but when you have 35,000 people in two job centres, there's only so many conclusions you can draw. One of Falkirk's strengths is actually hiding how bad a town it really is. We use the Kelpies and the Falkirk wheel to promote it as this amazing tourist attraction. But in reality, it's just two horses' heads and an oversized, oddly shaped seesaw. Somehow though, in 2011, it was voted as Scotland's most beautiful town. Must have been some sizey rug we used to hide everything under. At least we know where our tax is going. If you ever wanted proof of how bad a town Falkirk actually is, watch this video. You alright? <laughs> I didn't think you heard me the first time, sorry. <laughs> I've what? been on here for ages. I had tonnes of stuff like a champagne glasses, the full shebang. You'll no find that doing the tourist information. Man of means, man no means. The company bars that makes Iron Brew first set up in Falkirk, even although back then they spelt it Iron Brew. The boxcar midnight train. Stirling is the hometown of Wallace's Monument, a castle, and enough drugs to sedate Eastern Europe. I have a quote here from a local resident, nothing to recommend in it. Even the train station is plagued with drug-addled Neds begging for money. Unlike the previous contenders on our list, Stirling is a city and not a town. Who they paid off for the city status, I'll never know. But somehow in 2003, the Queen granted it. Obviously hadn't made a visit before she made that decision. Whilst doing some research on Stirling, I found a forum of people trying to find positives in the city. And the most upbeat response was, there are five golf courses, it's at sea level, and there are no tall buildings so the skies look enormous. You know a place is bad when one of the only three compliments you can give it is, it's at sea level. Now granted Stirling does have a castle, with a massive creepy graveyard and a car park that doubles as a dog in sight. In my opinion the best thing about Stirling is the A905 that leads you out of it. The guy who designed and flew the first powered aircraft in Scotland worked in Stirling. Old stogies I have found, short but not 
too big. Kilmarnock is a Scottish borough about 20 miles south of Glasgow and according to Google, that's where the positives end. Kilmarnock is chock a block with semi-literate inbred morons. Probably just a little bit too close to the English border. I found out that Kilmarnock used to be a town that made carpets, which could come in handy by the sounds of it because you might need to wipe your feet on the way out. One of Kilmarnock's only award was UK's friendliest shopping town. What sort of place must you be when that's your biggest accolade? Oh aye, we have burnt down buildings, people taking spice and a problem with Neds. But if you're coming here to spend your money, we won't stab you. <laughs> Kilmarnock also has a professional football team in the top tier of Scottish football. And a bit like the town, the less said about them the better. Man of means, but no. The TV show Whose Line Is It Anyway featured a regular by the name of Colin Mockery, who was born in Kilmarnock. Paisley is often dubbed as Scotland's largest town and it really has the crime statistics to back that up. Put it this way, when I googled Paisley, one of the top suggested searches was Paisley Sheriff Court. It's so bad it has its own webpage titled How to Stay Safe in Paisley. The Paisley diet consists of fast food, chewing gum and white bread. Probably a wee sprinkle of methadone in there as well. To give you an idea of the local culture, Paisley used to be home to a pub called the Pea Jobby Inn before it was demolished. I'm not sure why it was called that. But maybe the landlord was getting sick and tired of explaining to punters what went in the toilet, so just decided to rename the pub to remind them. The town also has a memorial to a court case about the time somebody found a snail in a ginger bottle. You know the court's a major part of the town when they're building memorials to previous cases. Glasgow Airport is also based in Paisley. Possibly a decision made by the Scottish Parliament to try and stop people leaving the country. If you want to leave, you're gonna have to go through Paisley. It's the tourists I feel sorry for. Trip advisors just fully complaints from punters who had a long haul flight layover in Glasgow and decided to stay in a hotel near the airport. But in Paisley's defence, I don't think they asked for it. Every hand out in every Paisley was the birthplace of famous actor Gerard Butler and singer-songwriter Paolo Nettini. David Tennant, the Scottish doctor who also lived in Paisley for a while. So there we have it. The first five of the top 10 worst places in Scotland. I made that sound more complicated than it is. Make sure to jump down in the comment section and let me know what you think the top five should be. Unless you've already watched the second part, in which case, stop cheating. Also, if you're watching this video on the day it was posted, myself and Marley13 will be in the Create Scotland Discord server between 9 and 10, doing a mini Q&A, answering questions that anybody has. If you want to get involved, check the description for the link to the Create Scotland Discord server. It's open for everyone, really. If you've missed the Q&A, you can still feel free to join. I'm sure we'll be hosting more with other Scottish YouTubers in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to drop a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel if you're new. My Twitter handle is at BatchyHD if you're feeling a wee bit stalkerish. Just don't tweet me asking me what I had for breakfast because that's just a bit weird. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I never said I'm the nicest guy in the world but I'd rather die for my girl. I'ma buy her diamonds and pearls. And that don't mean that she's materialistic. I know she fell in love with me cause I'm a lyrical misfit. We stare in the whip and the sunshine and cheering and singing. He's saying, I'm in love with the shape of you.